Hi, I'm CC, and in our most recent video, I showed you our cool ticket-based rail system we have on our server, as well as a roundabout and how to make it. And in this video, I'm going to cover some accessories and other parts of the rail that you want to have, like stations and ticket machines and other things. But before that, I want to quickly mention that in the last video, I neglected to say who actually made the uh, rail. So the ticket system was an idea by my friend Kieran, and then it w the actual rail was a group collaboration between me, Kieran, and our friend Joe. I really should have mentioned that in the last episode. But I have all the links in the description, so go check them out. So now let's quickly cover some of the cool accessories you can add to your rail to make them just as good as possible. So something I should mention before I go into specifics is that stations are very much up to your own interpretation. They are very customizable, you can do whatever the heck you want with them really. But this is the simplest design I have come up with. This is the one that I usually use as a basis to then work off of. So here we have loads of powered rails that go up against the wall and then buttons above them. Then if you press the button it will activate them one at a time sending out all the minecarts. So let's do a quick demonstration of that. All you need to do is just place in the minecart chests and any minecarts you want. Just get in it and then press the button. And then you'll go out one at a time and make a full train of minecarts. So over here in our test world we have a stripped down version of this where you can see the redstone. So this wiring is pretty simple. All you need is just a line of redstone directly behind the buttons. That then goes into a repeater chain all set to four ticks and directed into the blocks that have the powered rails behind them. So now when you press the button, it will just set off each repeater four ticks apart and send out the minecarts. And here it is with the minecarts. I'm not going to do a full tutorial on how to make this since the redstone's pretty open and to see, but I will mention how to get the rails in this specific configuration. Basically all you need to do is place on the rails like so, with a regular rail between, make this little L shape, and then just place down a rail on top, and then break it, and that will put the rail in this permanent 90 degree angle. And then you can just keep doing that same pattern over and over again to add extra segments to it. And then if you want to have a little exit like this, what you need to do is just do this, and then that, and that way none of the rails will connect to the wrong one and it's all sorted for you. So this here is the unloading platform and the way it works is if a minecart train comes in one at a time they will each go into their own individual bay, like so. And the way it works is quite simple. So once a minecart comes in and goes on top of the detector rail it will unpower the torch, unpowering the redstone which will then let this, turn, let this torch turn back on. That will then switch the rail going over to here and the same will repeat over and over again. Now something I should note is that rails are directional which basically means they will try and pull in the same direction every single time which is south to east and this can cause problems if you are trying to build a this specific design rotated or flipped like this because as you see here the rails want to be this direction but on this side they want to be this way. So to get this effect, you have to have a power torch beneath this one. And the way you get around that is underneath here, you have the redstone torch into dust, but then it goes into another torch, which will then unpower this redstone, and then go into the final torch, which will unpower this rail. So it basically works in the inverse of the other one. So rather than turning the torches on, they're turning the torches off. And it can be a bit hard to understand when to use which one. So the simplest way of doing it is just make this one. If it doesn't work, make that one. So there are two more things I want to cover before getting into any of the ticket based stuff. And this is the play detector and the chest detector. We'll start with the play detector. So what this does is it can tell the difference between a chest minecart and a minecart with a player in it. So if I just place down a chest minecart and then press the button, you'll see that nothing happens, it turns left. But if I get into it and press the button, I will go right. So it works pretty simply. Basically what you need to do is have an observer facing into a string. So string has the neat effect that if a player interacts with it, it will make an update. 
which can then be read by an observer, which then gets its signal sent down below into a two-tick repeater. This is very important. It has to be two-tick. If it's a one-tick repeater, it won't register the pulse. It will just uh, ignore it entirely. Then it just goes into a pulse extender that will then go into a track switcher. So the play detector will work with any mob as long as the hitbox goes and interacts with the string. So villagers work. But a frog's hitbox is too small and won't be detected. So just keep that in mind. But it does cover most mobs in the game. And one more thing to note is that you want to have at least four rails between the play detector and the track. As the, t the tick delay on the repeater will mean that if it's any closer it won't open in time and you'll just go that way. So next up is the chest detector, or I guess it's more accurate to call it the full chest detector. So if I was to put in a chest mine cart with no items and press the button, it will go left. But if I have any items at all in the chest mine cart, it will go right. And this uses the comparator interacting with the detector rail. So basically, a detector rail will detect any minecart that goes over it. So be it a chest minecart, a regular minecart, or furnace minecart, basically any minecart. And the comparator will take a signal out only if there is an item in here, like so. And then just put that into a repeater, which will then fill, which will then maximize the pulse back to 15, and then go into the pulse extender like normal. So back on the server, at Fennec, which is our train yard, we have some play detectors and also a chest detector. And the uses we have for this is if we send over a regular chest mine cart, it won't get detected by that and we'll just go into here, which then goes into our storage to then do uh, item sorting. But if a player goes through, it will go left. And that will take us over here, which will eventually be our train station. So it basically acts as like a player filtration system. So any chest mine carts will go into our storage building. Any players will go into the train station. So over here we have a chest mine cart detector. And this one is an interesting one. Because over here is our farm building and this will fill up a minecart chest with wheat and sugarcane and other items and then once it fills up enough it will then go on this rail across this roundabout over to the storage building but we will need to restock the minecart over there so if i just send over an empty minecart you'll see it will go forward but then if i send in a minecart that has an ender pearl in it, it should go to the right, like so. That way you can sort out your minecarts entirely. So if you use these two things in conjunction, you can completely sort minecarts. You can send all your player minecarts left, you could send all your empty minecarts forward, and you could send all your full minecarts right, allowing you a much more control over your minecart systems without even using the tickets. And if you bring the tickets in, then you have even greater control. And something else I'd like to show here, this is a item filter that uses the ticket system. But rather than using tickets, we instead have raw gold in here and raw iron. And that is because that building over there is our super smelter. So if there's ever any ores that go over this uh, filter, they will go forward. And then it will go into the super smelter and get sorted. It does take out an iron ore, which does mean you will lose a single iron ore if you had like a full minecart chest of it. So you could use a ticket instead, but I think it's fine. So you see how basically this is an entirely automated junction for every function we could possibly need. And in the future, I would like to expand our infrastructure to include full-on sorting systems or other smelters, using it for farms. It's just a way of organizing items without having to use hopper chains or long water lines. It's awesome. I love it. I think it's fantastic. Now let's get into the tickets. So in the last video, I showed you how the ticket-based system worked with the filters and how to make the roundabout. So if you haven't seen that, I'd recommend go watching that because this won't make much sense without it. But if you have seen it, 
you might notice that in the last video, I didn't really show you how you use it in a practical sense, like how you would put it into your world, how you set up your stations to actually organize the tickets and all of that stuff. So let's go into some detail on that now. So in the last video, there was a slight bit of confusion about how you would go about making or how you'd go about implementing this into a full system. So here is the roundabout I built in the last video. And I have also connected into a second one. So for this roundabout, I've labeled it A, B, C, and D. And in these filters down below, all the tickets match up to whichever exit it will take you to. But if you had two roundabouts in a line with both having the exact same A, B, C, D layout, this, these two filters would have the chance of taking the tickets for both this roundabout and the next one, which isn't ideal. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that every single exit has a different name and ticket. So for example, here we have the A, B, C, D tickets, but on this side we instead have E, F and G. We still have a D ticket though, because we like to name the tracks in between junctions. So this is the D track. So if you want to enter the D track, you'd use a D ticket. And that would be either side. And there's no chance of you going from over here and accidentally using the D ticket again, because you've already used it over here. So let's say you were starting from A and you wanted to get to G. Well, you'd have to first put in a D ticket to enter the D track, and then a G ticket to enter the G track. And when I push it forward, it will pass into the D way, and then go over to the G way. But let's say you're coming from the B side now, where this junction will send you left by default if I was to do nothing. Like, so. So in this case, if you wanted to get from B to G, you would only need a G ticket. Like so. But how do you go about actually setting up your stations to make this more convenient for yourself? And behind me is probably the most simple way of doing it. Up here are the four stations I go to the most from this location. And inside of these barrels is the exact tickets you need to get to those locations. So for the Stockholm station, there's just a single ticket, which is Stockholm, while the Swamp Station requires the Swamp Ticket and a Bridge Ticket. And the way you would use this is just grab a minecart chest, a regular minecart for yourself, and then one of each of these tickets. Then just go over to one of the loading platforms I built earlier, place down the minecarts, and in the chest minecart that has to be in the front, just add in your tickets, then you can sit down and press the button and this will send you on your way. But there is ways you can automate this better. Well, this is probably the next step up in terms of complexity, and this is what I like to use at my main base. So here is a wall of barrels with some water going into a hopper. And you can set up each of these barrels to be a different combination of tickets to get to as many stations as you want. So in this barrel here, I have a destination ticket. That will be the name of the station and then A and B, which would be the two junctions that would actually take me there. Then all I need to do is just press Q on each of these tickets. They'll go down into a chess mine cart and then go off like that. So down below here is the redstone. So background here at the redstone, when you throw in your items into the hopper, they will go in one at a time. So here we have a comparator that reads this hopper that then goes into a pulse extender. This pulse extender will power this dispenser, which will place down a minecart chest onto this rail here. But at the same time, this redstone torch will unpower, which will then unpower this uh, rail here. And then each time a new ticket passes through this item hopper, it will reset this pulse extender back to full. And then once every ticket has drained into the minecart, it will then time out and then head off. And we have this little buffer here just so up top, if you were to throw it in quite slowly, 
you would still be able to get all three tickets in or as many tickets as you need. So see that even though it's quite slow there, every ticket got in. Now, an issue with the design is that you're eventually going to run out of minecarts down below. So you could just fill it up manually every so often. But over here, we have a little T-junction. And what this will do is basically just filter out the first minecart in a train. So the first one will go into the wall and the rest of them will go over to this unloading area. And down this way is where the first minecart will go. Goes over to this cactus, gets destroyed, and then goes into these hoppers, refilling the system. So there are two designs for this. Over here is the T-junction I just showed you. And the way this works is the first minecart runs over this detector rail, which goes into a pulse extender, going and switching the track. And then every minecart after that will then go over the second detector rail, which also activates the same pulse extender. So that way you can have trains of any length that will keep resetting it back to default. And then once it's done, there you go. And here we have a slightly different design. This is more of a fork that kind of resembles how track switches work in real life. And with this one, the first minecart will go to the right, while every other one will go to the left. And it works in essentially the same way, just slightly more compact, with a pulse extender in the middle. That then just goes into a target block with torches on. And these torches will either be in this configuration or like this, depending on which way you want this rail to go. Now there's one more design that my friend Kieran actually made, which uses a encoding system to set up your tickets. And this is it here. So if you send over a minecart that has no tickets, it will come out with no tickets. But if you were to put in this encode ticket here, and then press the button, you'll see that it now has a B, A and C ticket in it. And the reason for that is on this side, we have an item filter set to this encode ticket that then goes into these three torches, which will uh, flash off for a second, which will let these hoppers pass these tickets over to the front hopper. And then these hoppers will then push an item into the chest minecart that runs past it. And these are all set to whichever tickets you would need to get to your destination. And this is great for simplifying stations, as it allows you to have only one ticket you need to place into the minecart, while the rest of them will get sorted out on the track. You could have this hidden inside of a wall, or a mountain, or all sorts, really. And this also works in conjunction with other ones. So over here, we have three hoppers next to each other. These ones are set to one, two, and three. So if I send over the one ticket, at the end, we will have the D and E ticket, send over the two ticket, and at the end, we will have C and D, and finally, the three ticket will give us A and B. And this works a little bit differently in that it uses powered rails as basically parallel redstone. So by pulsing a rail, an observer can detect the difference and then power the next rail, which then can be detected by another observer, and you can essentially make really fast parallel redstone lines. And these will then go into these torches here in different patterns depending on which tickets you need. So if two stations on your route require the same or roughly the same tickets, it can you can basically program any route you want. So let's quickly show you a prototype that Kieran has designed that helps demonstrate this in a more practical sense. So let's do a quick demonstration. So over here, let's go to Lewis's base. So I just need to click this button here. Around the back, it should drop off a minecart. Yep, there it is. With the encode ticket in it. And if I just sit behind it, it will send the minecart over there. And while I go to the left here, And then over here at the end, it should now have the Lewis ticket in and also the C ticket, which will be the tickets required to get to his base. And you can set this up to any skill. You could have 
hundreds of encoders all covering different stations and each station could require like 20 tickets so this is more of a system for scaling up outside of your base and you might have noticed in the middle of that there was a little split and that's just an aesthetic choice so that way you can hide all of the redstone and hoppers and stuff so imagine that this was like solid blocks you couldn't see through it that way it's all a mystery and you just never have to see it you could have this hidden inside of anywhere really so i'm just going to do a quick pan of this just so you can take a look and get some ideas and some inspiration i can't really do tutorials since it is very customizable to your specific setup but all i can mention is make sure you set these to two ticks as repeaters on one tick can't actually detect an observer pulse and then here's a little side profile of this bit and also over here is the button selector panel you have a dropper here that goes into a hopper and then this minecart chest will, or this dispenser that puts out a minecart chest that will then collect the item that you need, like so. So two things I want to quickly mention. Firstly, in the last video, a lot of people were asking about ticket returns and suggesting different ideas. And we did try a bunch of different designs of ticket returns initially. Uh, we couldn't really get any way that worked consistently or well. We do have some ideas brewing of uh, ways of dealing with it in the long term, but for now, I don't have anything to show you on that. And also some people were asking if we have a T-junction design, and we do, but it's not very good, I don't like it, it's kind of hard to build, and it's not very user-friendly, so the concept is there, but I don't have anything to show you right now. But if you do really want a T-junction design, what you can do is just cut off one of the sides of a roundabout, I guess. And we'll hopefully have the T-junction design soon for you. But aside from that, I really hope you enjoyed. I have plenty of videos coming along the way of me building rail stuff on the server. And also plenty of non-rail based stuff as well. I've got some cool things coming out in the next coming weeks as well. So I hope you all enjoyed. If you have any questions, make sure you ask them in the comments. And I'll see you next time. Bye!